Greetings to everyone and thank you all for taking some time of your busy Monday schedules to participate in this webinar organized by PCB. This webinar is on ISO 31000, Risk Management, and how it can help an organization. My name is Britt and I am managing the portfolio of Governance, Risk and Compliance here at PCB. Today's presenter is Mr. Steve, Steve Tremblay, owner and executive ITSM ISO consultant at Excelsa Tech. Before Steve begins his presentation, I would like to ask the audience to please write down any questions you may have during the webinar in the chat box on your control panel, and we will respond to a few at the end and answer the remaining through email, depending on the time. Enjoy the session. Steve, please proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Britt. Well, good day, everyone. So, uh, as uh, Brett mentioned, a uh, brief introduction, uh, I am a, uh, an IT service management consultant and trainer as well. Uh, I am also a partner of uh, PECB, uh, so I've been training and I continue to train uh, to this day in different fields of uh, IT service management, which includes uh, the aspects of security, risk, uh, and so on governance as well. So uh, you could see uh, some uh, short list here of some of the certification I have, uh, but these are all uh, supported by the experience. So uh, really two carriers, uh, first carrier in the military uh, for 22 years, and now in the past uh, 10 years I've been uh, uh, really uh, managing and working as a consultant in IT service management within uh, my own company, my own organization. Uh, and a trainer as well. So this is the agenda that uh, I'll be following uh, for this uh, uh, hour, so for about 45 minutes at least. Uh, and then, as Britt mentioned, we'll have a, a question period at the end. So the idea is not to go in details with the 3100 uh, standard, but I still want to do a brief overview of that standard uh, and then concentrate on the uh, uh, subject here that we have, which is risk management. So what is risk, how to position risk within an organization, and I chose as well to bring in perspective uh, three areas or three examples where risk management should really be considered uh, in any type of organization. Because I will be talking about risk management in a generic sense today, uh, so it does apply for sure to IT organizations but it applies to any type of organization. When we do uh, assess risk or manage risk, uh, it's all type of risks. And that's what we will see as I go through this presentation. So, uh, and I want to start with really looking at uh, what is risk uh, as a first thing. Uh, and, and, I mean, from the picture that you see there, uh, all of those trains are fully loaded with uh, fuel or raw uh, petrol. Uh, one cannot stop but thinking of uh, what if. What if that train has an accident? What if it's, uh, it becomes under control? Uh, what if the brakes don't function anymore? Uh, many questions could come to our mind. And if you looked at the ISO 31000 and you looked at the definition of risk, a uh, fairly simple one, uh, 31000 defined risk as the effect of uncertainty on objectives. So we know that here we have an objective and it's to take those uh, wagons from one uh, location to another location. And then there is, a def uh, there is definitely risk associated with that uh, and those risks are the probability that an event could occur and that consequences could come up at those events. And that is what we see as uh, the definition of risk. And naturally, well, in this case, well, that could be quite a major disaster. And, uh, well, in fact, uh, I chose that example as uh, it was a good example because it happens uh, in the past uh, year, year and a half, uh, several occasions right now around the world. And, and the picture that we see here is not just an isolated picture. Uh, we can see, uh, if you check on the news, if you go on the internet, many other uh, examples as well of that, 
of that type of uh, consequences of, again, risk that manifests themselves and uh, turn out to uh, really bad and tragic consequences to it. We could also avoid risk. So again, a decision that will be taken uh, and, and that will uh, be uh, really an action that will withdraw us from that situation where we are faced with those risks. We could also decide to uh, retain the risks. So, so again, this is accepting uh, the burden of a potential loss uh, or benefit or gain from a risk. Because keep in mind that the risk doesn't have just a negative uh, aspect. I mean, there are risks that have positive effects, positive consequences as well. And there are still risks, and we still need to manage, with, uh, manage them. And we'll see that as uh, I continue with the presentation. Uh, then we have the risk transfer. Uh, when we talk about risk transfer is a position where uh, we won't be able to uh, deal with that risk on our own and we're going to look at sharing with another party uh, the burden of uh, the potential loss or benefit or gain in fact from, uh, from that risk as well. And we could do that uh, again through uh, potentially uh, taking insurance uh, with different insurance companies and different types of insurance, or we could also do that through different agreements uh, that we may have with, uh, with partners. Now the two at the bottom, as well as the slide, are quite uh, important as well. Uh, exploit. Uh, that's a little bit more aggressive, but in some, uh, some cases it might be a choice as well on how to deal with risk. So uh, this there uh, is really actively seeking out risk uh, in order to gain competitive advantage. And, and since risk per se does not always carry that negative uh, connotation, as I mentioned before, uh, it can lead to beneficial results uh, depending on the outcomes of that risk. So that is also one way to deal with risk. And the last one is to uh, just ignore it. So uh, see no evil, hear no evil, uh, and, and many business uh, are willingly overlooked uh, the risk that they are exposed to, and they just ignore them. And that is one way that we could deal with this. Uh, is it the best way or not? Well, again, each situation is different, and the idea is that you have to assess and know on how best to deal with any type of potential risk that you're faced with. So that's the foundation of this. So now we'll look at uh, that overview. Now that I set the stage with at least uh, what is risks and how we can deal with risk, uh, let's look at uh, at least the major clauses. And when I talk about the clauses, uh, I mean the section of the uh, ISO 31000 standard on risk management. So these are uh, the list of the top level clauses. Uh, if you've worked with ISO standards in the past, uh, you can see that the first ones, the first clauses are pretty standard, uh, the scope of the standard so that the reader understands what they're faced with with that document. Uh, but clause number two, terms and definitions, um, in this case related specifically to risk management. And, and this is a quite important clause because if we are to work uh, to assess risk and manage risk uh, within our own sphere responsibility, and we're supposed to work with others as well that are doing it too, uh, in the same organization or partnered organization, we have to make sure we speak the same language. So clause two has a list of defined terms there uh, that can be quite uh, relevant to, uh, to anyone. Uh, three is uh, the uh, are the principles. Uh, I will have a slide in a, a, few a few minutes, yes, on these principles, but these are statements uh, that are uh, define to guide organization on how they should approach risk. Four is the approach, uh, the framework. So uh, this is all about describing on how, based on our own, again, organization, we should define the framework on how we will deal uh, with uh, assessing and managing risks. And then what we have there is uh, sub-clauses that will deal with uh, the mandate, the commitment, uh, per se, uh, the design of the framework to be able to uh, manage risks properly, uh, but as well how to implement 
this framework and potentially associated process and procedures uh, that will go along that, pro that framework. And, and that touches as well within that clause the elements of how can we monitor and manage this framework once it's implemented and how can we improve it over time. Because as we define as an organization how we're going to deal with risk, uh, it's not going to be a one-off project that we set that up, we train people and we forget about it. It's going to be uh, implemented, uh, people are going to be trained uh, and we're going to be monitoring that over time and continually evaluating that that framework is working properly. And if we detect that there are any areas that are not so good, uh, then we have to adjust our framework. So clause number five is uh, the process. So it's uh, really a guidance on how the process should take place. And naturally, uh, the process will take on the framework that I just discussed at the top level and then details, detail that uh, to uh, help organization to define those activities, those procedures, uh, potentially down to work instructions if we're using tools on how to uh, better manage risks. So we're talking about uh, communication, consultation, because we have to make sure that people that are or should be involved would be aware of uh, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we're talking about in that close about establishing the context and, and we'll review these concepts uh, a little bit later in the presentation as I will go back down to those uh, specific activities of the process. But establishing the context is very important. Uh, we have to know what are our boundaries. We have to know where we are right now and what we're trying to achieve and, and what is our vision. And without understanding that, we cannot really do uh, a thorough and relevant uh, risk assessment. Uh, so once we have that, then we can get to conduct that risk assessment, as I just man mentioned. Uh, and out of that assessment, we can then deal with identifying potential risk treatment. Uh, and that, uh, there's a subclause there that will guide as well on how that, that portion of the process is also uh, uh, required to, uh, to occur. Uh, there's two last clauses in the uh, subclauses in clause five. And one is on monitoring and review. So again, to provide the requ uh, required guidance on how best to implement uh, that as well. Uh, and Muted. Coordinating uh, the risk management process as well. So how are we going to uh, document Unmuted. process is formalized and, com and, and used by everyone in the uh, organization. The standard also includes uh, an annex where uh, we're provided with uh, some attributes of uh, enhanced risk management. So it's, it's further guidance to fine tune even more uh, your uh, framework and your process. Uh, so that's really dedicated to uh, a bit more mature organization. So an organization that starts to formalize on how to deal with risk will start with uh, the uh, first clauses and up to clause five, uh, do a first implementation of their processes and then can assess the Annex A as a, an option for a further improvement down the road. Uh, this, just like any project, is not something that we will implement in, in one shot in like several months and that's again all done. Uh, the idea is to look at the organization and what we can take on based on our resource uh, resources uh, and then implement uh, with incremental. So having some quick wins potentially and ultimately have a full functioning process and keep improving it over time. So that I was going to touch a bit more on clause three, uh, the uh, principles. Uh, I wanted to show you those principles just in case you don't have access to uh, the ISO 31000, you never had a training on it, uh, so that you could see what is, uh, what are those principles that the standard is really guiding us on uh, or recommending us to use as a guide to implement our uh, own risk management framework and processes. Uh, so uh, starting at the top, create and protect value. Uh, well, that's one basic aspect here. Uh, when we do manage incidents, when we do manage changes in an organization, uh, the idea is to manage these while protecting, again, 
the organization's operation, making sure we can still achieve our objectives, and protecting the value that as a provider, potentially within that organization, we're contributing to create as well. So that applies to risk management as well. We have to make sure that if we remove risks, that we're not going to endanger the production of value to ultimately our, uh, uh, ultimately to our customers. Uh, is an integral part of all organizational processes. So a risk is not a process that exists on its own and has to be integrated part of the organizational processes in any organization. It has to be part of the decision making as well. So we're going to do assessment of potential situations that could threaten our operation. Uh, and these assessments are going to help us to be able to take the right decision. So it has to be part of the overall, as well, decision making of our organization. Uh, explicit, explicitly address uncertainty. That's one of the foundation, again, of uh, this process, trying to look for the unknown, uh, the potential, of the, the most probable uh, uh, events that could occur that would be turning to be a risk that could be again negative or positive and, and the potential consequences of these. Uh, is st uh, systematic, structured and timely. So as we saw part of the standard we have that clause that we'll talk about having a formal process on how to deal with risks. Uh, so it has to be again detailed and defined so that everyone works the same way for that process just like any other processes, uh, whether we're, again, dealing with managing incidents as an, uh, with an organization, and we have multi-key uh, players that will be dealing with resolving or managing those incidents. The same thing applies here for risk. Uh, based on the best available information, again, uh, we have to uh, make sure that the process that we will have in place will take us to look at all those sources and make sure we use them uh, properly. Uh, tailored, so it must be tailored again to our own needs, so not two organizations are the same, uh, so our process has to be tailored to our organization. That means that, well, we will have to take into consideration the human aspect, cultural aspect of our own organization as well. It needs to be transparent and inclusive, uh, so again, uh, we will identify risk, we will identify treatment for those risks, uh, we can't do that in isolation. It has to be communicated, as we saw earlier as well. Uh, so that has to be part of the overall organization. Dynamic, iterative, responsive to change. So as I mentioned before as well, uh, it has to be continually uh, evolving. Uh, everything evolves around us all the time. Uh, the needs of the, require, uh, the business changes, uh, the technologies, and the best practices. So we need to uh, adapt as well. So that leads to the last, uh, as well, uh, principle here, facilitate control improvement of the organization. So not only within the process, but help to contribute to the overall uh, improvement as well. So uh, this is just to retake clause four. I wanted to show a graphic uh, form as well. I did speak on it already. So again, uh, in that clause four, the framework, we have to have a mandate. Uh, and then that mandate will help us to draw the picture of that framework that we need to have in place for our own organization to manage our uh, uh, risks. And then obviously, eventually, once we have this, is to implement uh, that risk management uh, process that will form up out of this, uh, and then we get into uh, the monitoring aspect. Again, the idea is to be able to identify, analyze, and respond to risk factor. Uh, uh, and it, in the best interest, again, of the objectives of the organization. And having that proper risk management will imply uh, control of possible future events uh, in a more proactive than a reactive perspective. And then the control improvement of that framework will ensure that, uh, well, we keep being proactive as well. And we don't end up with a framework and processes in place that will uh, become obsolete and not responding to what we need within our own organization. So what is uh, risk management now? So I've talked about uh, what are risks. I, I talked about uh, the uh, standard up to some degree uh, just now. Now let's look at what is risk management? And I'll be taking back 
uh, part of the standard, uh, which is, in fact, the clause 5, the process, uh, to go over uh, that specific subject now. So in 31,000, uh, risk management is defined as such as you see here. Uh, so coordinated activities uh, to direct and control an organization with regard to risk. Uh, we saw that the risk is defined as the uh, probability of an event and its consequences. So risk management will be all about managing uh, these situations using dedicated uh, processes, methods, and potentially uh, supporting tools as well so that we do manage these risks as well uh, as good as possible. And as we saw before, when we looked at the uh, uh, process uh, of the standard, uh, we saw that, yes, uh, we will have uh, different uh, activities uh, within the process that will need to be in place. And that's what we need to have within our uh, uh, model here to be able to do risk management properly. And uh, I bring in, I'm bringing here that uh, process. So that's a depiction of what you have in Clause 5 as well. So when I uh, talked about it before, if you remember, I mentioned about the communication and the consultation. Uh, I did mention about the establishment of the context. That's really at the onset of us trying to achieve to define our process. We need to know, again, as I mentioned, where, we're, where we are in the context of the overall market in our business, what are we trying to achieve, how are we trying to achieve it, uh, and then look at assessing really the situation based on that context. So uh, once we define that context, uh, we would look at internal but external factors as well. Uh, we'll define risk criteria. Uh, and those risk criteria will be used later as we move through the process. So once we have that context done and those risk criteria identified, that's when we get to uh, define uh, the activities, the subfees that needs to be done for uh, assessing risk. And you have that in that center box, uh, pale blue there, where we see uh, the risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. So once we uh, get to uh, these activities, uh, we do the risk evaluation, that's done against those criteria that we've assessed from our uh, context evaluation that we did at first. Once we get to that point, then we get to uh, be able to identify those risk treatment and implement them once they're approved. And once this is in place, uh, then it's all about monitoring, reviewing, and as you could see with those uh, uh, arrows from monitoring and review, feeding back to establishing the context. So it's a continuous process. Uh, that we will always keep going and evolving over time. It's not something that uh, is going to be implemented and, and then that'll be it, it'll be over with, and we just operate without changing it at all time, as I mentioned earlier. So this is uh, the process. So where would we be without a proper risk management? I mean, we do risk management all the time. We do risk management from the moment that uh, we can start to think and rationalize as a human being uh, in life. Uh, so it is everywhere and, and it's all the time present. And we do it sometimes not knowing that we're doing it because we're so used to do it, whether it's, yeah, we need to move and we have to figure out exactly how best to move uh, our stuff from one house to another house. Uh, we're going to use a, a provider to help us to do that or are we going to do it ourselves? Are we going to rent a truck or not? Can we fit everything within our car and trailer or not? So, I mean, and we do that and we don't really think about what we're doing. But what we're really doing is exactly following the process uh, that I just uh, shown on the previous slide. Uh, in some cases, well, we're going to be doing it a little bit more uh, rigidly, so formally uh, following that process. But uh, as you can see and as you probably already know, we do that all the time. So to position risk management in an organization. I, I did mention before that, uh, in fact, uh, risk management is not something done in isolation. And within an organization, there's multiple types of risks that are potentially present. Uh, and we need to assess them all. And so that means that overall, as an organization, we have to look at uh, the overall picture. 
with, risk, with regards to risk. And that's where I'm going to be going uh, with uh, now uh, the next slide. It's on how ready risk should be positioned. So a uh, first slide here. Uh, if it has to be positioned within the organization, then that means it needs to be driven by the business. And we see that here at the top. So the business strategy and the planning that is done at the business level uh, uh, and all the processes that are there should be guiding on how we will define our uh, risk management model, framework, or infrastructure. Uh, so we have that guidance within the organization, uh, which has means as well to evaluate those uh, business processes. And that means that we're going to have policies. We're going to have multiple type of resources, processes, and procedures in place uh, with tools to automate those processes and means of reporting and analyzing as well. So we have that within the organization. And we have to build our risk management process part as well of that model. So it has to be integrated in this model. Because if we decide as a strategy from a business to go into one direction, as we have implemented a proper risk management process, we may identify uh, risk, in fact, that could be serious enough to, in fact, influence the business decision to go into that direction. So, and that's what we want as well. We don't want to go in the direction, find out afterwards there are risks, and jeopardizing, potentially, our organization. So, Essential steps now for managing risk. So I'm building up on what we saw from the standard before uh, when I showed you the process. Uh, and, and on the next uh, six slides, seven slides, in fact, uh, I'll go through each one of those uh, phases here that uh, take again in, in a little bit more detail the, uh, the process itself involved uh, when we want to manage risk. So starting with uh, the first one here. So when we look at identify relevant business objectives, so that is the first activity that is really linking us to our uh, business within our own organization. And it's, it's important really to begin with that understanding of those relevant business objectives because uh, that is what is our drive. These are uh, uh, guidance uh, really on how we should then approach for dealing with risk and assessing risk. Uh, and there will probably be a basis for subsequently identifying potential risks uh, that will potentially affect the achievement of those objectives. And that's what we want here. That's what we're trying to achieve. And that will then result into us assessing those risks uh, and management, management plans and, and see on how critical they can be with regards to those objectives that we have identified in the organization. And normally what we would uh, typically do is uh, what most of you may uh, or probably will know uh, because you've done that before, but it's uh, doing uh, analysis uh, that we call a SWOT analysis. So identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, and that's, again, going to help us to identify those uh, areas there of the organizations and then drill towards potentially identifying those events that we uh, have discussed before. Uh, and we've identified as potential risks. So once we've done this uh, identification, uh, it's the next step to identify specifically those events as I concluded on the first activity. Uh, so based on those organizational objectives, uh, we will look at uh, uh, having designated, designated uh, owners of the risk assessment first, and then these designated owners uh, should develop the preliminary inventory of those events that could potentially uh, impact uh, the achievement of the organizational objectives. And then the review of these, you know, the identification of those events, means that, uh, in fact, we're going to have to look at uh, potential uh, areas of the organization, internal processes, people, technology, uh, any type of internal such uh, information or sources, but as well external sources as well. Uh, we're going to look at financial performance, uh, board meetings, uh, uh, minutes, annual reports, uh, and, and so on. And that is going to help us to really do that full inventory uh, so that you know we know what are the opportunities that we should probably uh, focus and flow towards 
uh, the management strategy, but also the threats, the more negative ones, where we should uh, further categorize and, and assess as well, because some of them may be indicative of uh, potential risks. Then we get to uh, the third activity here, uh, determining the risk tolerance. Uh, as I mentioned before, each organization is different. Uh, each organi organization will have a different tolerance to risk, and that has to be identified. That tolerance within an organization has to be also fine-tuned to the different types of risk or categories of risks. Uh, so for one type of risk, we may have a certain tolerance. Or in, specific, uh, in a specific domain within our organization, we may have some tolerances. And, but that may be different with different types of risks or different domain uh, within our own organization. So we have to set that up so that when we look further down to potential mitigation, we know how tolerant we are or how tolerant we're not. Assess inherent likelihood and impact uh, uh, of the risk. So there, the events identified as potentially impeding the achievement of our objectives uh, are deemed to be risk, and they should be evaluated uh, based, again, on the likelihood of those uh, uh, to occur and their potential impact as well on our objectives of our organization. So that's, that is, again, linking us to our organization and what we're trying to achieve, where we're trying to go. And that... Uh, uh, these individual risk uh, ratings uh, will be brought together. They should be put together into a logical model uh, where we'll be then enabled to uh, further analyze, analyze those risks, uh, not only at the individual level, but in perspective as well with the other risks in relation to the other risks that are potentially uh, present as well. Uh, we have to do that because we can't just assess each single risk in isolations as they may have interdependencies and we want to be able to see those potential interdependencies. So we want to have a risk map uh, that will provide us that, that view there of all of those risks. Then we get to the evaluation. So once we have that road, that risk map, not a world map, but a risk map, uh, we can look at the evaluation. So again, we'll base that evaluation on our risk tolerance uh, and inherent risk assessment uh, management uh, that will determine how to best address uh, potentially those uh, identified risks. So as I mentioned, link to the tolerance, so the appetite for risk of our own organization uh, and, and the tolerance that we may have as well from our uh, objectives uh, that we've listed as an organization. And then the risk tolerance will vary, as I mentioned, depending on the type of risk or the different domains or importance of that risk with regards to, again, the potential areas that are threatened within our uh, objectives. And as we know, those objectives are going to priori be prioritized, so then those risks are prioritized too. So you could see where it's going and that that, that alignment to the business is critical to help us on how we should deal with risk. So I just wanted to show, well, just want a simple uh, a graphic here on how uh, a such a uh, risk map could come up. Uh, so you have on the left side here the uh, vertical axis, the impact from low to high, and at the bottom, the likelihood. So we want to be able to uh, put, put on that uh, chart there all of the risks that we've identified and decide where they fit. So are they really of a low uh, impact and low likelihood, so we could potentially just accept them as is, or are they really pretty high impact and high likelihood that they will uh, uh, occur, more or less, and we should then look at reduction, mitigation strategies, sharing, or potentially even avoiding it. So we have this uh, as such. You could see that it can be a lot easier to know uh, which one we should really pay more attention and to which method as well we should potentially uh, consider to deal with those risks. And, and the last activity is the assessment of residual uh, likelihood and impact on risk. So again, that, there uh, we have to consider both uh, the risk as previously identified and the related uh, risk response as well mechanism that we've identified and any potential control activities that we've also uh, uh, put in place to determine really if we've achieved 
to uh, limit uh, the impact uh, uh, and or the probability as well of the occurrence of those risks. So that's the idea here. And as you could see, we feed back to the beginning. So you have to remember that uh, it's not over and, and, and then we have to feed back to the beginning because it's potentially uh, uh, possible that we have to again take some actions to revise our risk uh, posture. And then we go back to the beginning because we've identified that there's still uh, residual risks uh, that haven't been taken care of and we need to uh, manage them properly. So uh, to uh, deal now with my last part, I wanted to highlight uh, just uh, three examples uh, within that presentation as we don't have much time, uh, but uh, also a list, uh, more complete list of those examples as well uh, before I start with that list. So where risk management should be considered, you see a whole list here, uh, mostly a list applying to most common organizations. Uh, that you could be working at strategic, operational, tactical level, compliance risk. So we are certified ISO uh, 20,000 or we're certified 9,001 or potentially uh, 27,001 in security. We have compliances that needs to be uh, met, meet. Uh, uh, so compliances risk assessment is one area that is uh, for sure uh, quite important. And, and all the other ones, whether it's finance, uh, with respect to fraud, market, uh, we want to do uh, operate in other market shares and, and we need to assess. And, and as you could see through the list, uh, uh, the last one, project risk assessment, well, any organization that is uh, existing nowadays uh, is evolving. Uh, very few are very static. Uh, so there is an evolution that is done within any organization. So there are projects that will be initiated there's an aspect as well of managing on how those projects are going to change the organization, which may affect on how we operate and how successful we are. So there's also an aspect of risk. So I, I picked to look at the organization uh, level and the risk management uh, as one of the three areas that I wanted to uh, really highlight some uh, information here. Uh, and, and I did touch the fact that we need to be linked to the business. So you could see from what I discussed before how important it is to be linked to the business. Uh, because as we saw here, we have to be able to identify risk, analyze them, and then respond to those potential uh, risks. Uh, so how can we do that not knowing about our own organization? So that links us to those levels of the strategic level at the uh, top level of the organization where we're going to be looking at different triggers, different situations where we're potentially uh, going into mergers uh, with other organization or we have changes uh, that are uh, coming to the organization of some kind uh, that are forced on us potentially from laws, regulations uh, or others. But it also applies to the tactical and operational level. So as the strategic direction is provided to the organization and we operate, well, we still face with different types of risks as well that needs to be managed. Whether it is, well, we deal with our providers or our suppliers or uh, recruiting uh, new people or uh, integrating new equipment, new technology within our uh, uh, own organizations. So that applies at all of these levels and uh, we need to make sure that uh, it is a fully integrated model. So it has to be conducted uh, all across those different uh, three levels within the organization with a drive ready from the top. So as we could see, uh, we have that drive that comes from a strategic level that's going to give us a direction. And then as we have that direction in place and we start to operate, uh, we need to have to make sure that uh, uh, we will have that overall view of those risks, that overall knowledge, and that their overall consequences or potential impact on our organizational objectives. And then as any elements are put into place at the tactical and operational level, we have to make sure that we're going to go and fine tune that as well from that level as well. So it's a top-down approach, as you see on the last bullet, uh, but that would be complemented by a, a bottom-up approach assessment as well. So there will be really a process that will be defined, and from the bottom up, we're going to assess all those small details to go back and link back 
to our organizational objectives to confirm that they're uh, met properly and not endangered. Uh, portfolio program project and risk management. So I wanted to touch this part as well uh, as it is uh, quite important. Uh, so uh, risk is as it is described in the first bullet here, uh, but now specifically to portfolios and, and also throughout the life of the programs and projects that will form those portfolios, we have to make sure that we manage risks. Uh, these have objectives as well that are in line with the objectives of the organization. So if we do then look at protecting those objectives of those projects or programs and portfolios, then we're contributing to achieving the overall organizational objectives as well. So that means, again, uh, applying what we saw of the process, but at the, at the portfolio program project uh, level and try to, within a project, manage all of those uh, projects or other aspects uh, of these uh, properly all through their life cycle as well. So from the planning stages of the project, but as we go through the execution and the closure of the project as well. So that means doing exactly the same activities uh, to uh, know exactly on how we're proceeding or how we will evolve with that project. Uh, so, and I mean, if we have uh, uh, an activity there, a project that is to uh, implement new technology, uh, and we talked as a project manager uh, with the people that will be uh, really responsible to make it happen, uh, and we see that there's an indication that it could take six months, but we have really planned only for three. Uh, well, we should potentially assess what are the potential risks of, yes, not making it within three months. And now we have a choice. We could avoid to go there or ignore them and deal with it once we get to the point of three months and we're still not finished and try to find solution. Or we could address it right from the start and try to deal with it right away and try to see on how we should react if we're faced with the fact that we're approaching the uh, deadline of three months and we're still not done. So again, importance of uh, risk management within uh, that uh, aspect here. One that I wanted to highlight is uh, information security. Uh, so information security, if uh, you have a background in this uh, domain, uh, you should already know that uh, it's when we do try to protect uh, in that uh, sphere or in domain of responsibilities, uh, the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of our information assets, uh, it's all about risk. So it's all about looking at the potential threats and vulnerabilities and try to identify those uh, risk those events that are going to be risks and try to protect ourselves against them. So again, uh, when you look at the ISO 27001 standard, a major part of it is all based on the risk management uh, process. And again, trying to get to identify these uh, risks, analyze them as well, evaluate them, and then make the uh, proper uh, treatment, uh, risk treatment strategies uh, present in front of the, the people that will take the decisions and ultimately have them implemented so that we can uh, be in a better position. And, and one last slide on that same domain here uh, that I wanted to bring in perspective and how and to show how, as I mentioned, of the continuous uh, aspect of the risk management process within the security management and how it works with the uh, risk management, but we have the same idea here as again. So at the onset, when we want to protect our organization from a security perspective, so protecting our information assets, uh, we have multiple parties. We have to plan on how we're going to proceed. We're going to have to act on how then uh, our situation uh, uh, is existing. So what are those threats and vulnerabilities? Uh, implement those proper risk treatments, so those controls that we will obviously uh, we should monitor and review constantly. And based on the achievement or the e efficiency, effectiveness of those controls, uh, decide if we need to implement uh, any potential improvements. And that is uh, constantly uh, going this way as well. So it's nonstop. So we will continually within the security management process, information security management process, uh, do risk management. We're always going to do that risk assessment uh, those risk assessment activities so that we can manage risk properly. 
So that is uh, what I wanted to cover uh, today. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, I mean, if you don't actively uh, attack risks and look at managing them, you will be attacked uh, uh, potentially uh, in multiple ways. Uh, I identify here on that slide as well as some other suggested sources. Yes, the ISO 31000, uh, but also uh, the ISO 31010, which is on risk assessment techniques. So going a little bit more in depth with uh, those techniques that exist uh, with regards to uh, uh, risk assessment. And then there's the ISO 73 as well uh, on risk management that is a, a vocabulary that uh, complement and supplement well the ISO 31000. So uh, dealing effectively with risk, uh, again, it is something that is uh, uh, critical. Uh, every organization should really consider what are those risks. But even before that, as we saw, needs to consider what framework we need to have in place, what process we need to have in place so that we can then look at managing those risks. Uh, it needs to be managed at the enterprise level, as we saw, and in an integrated way. Uh, we cannot look in isolation at risk pertaining to information security, risk pertaining to projects, risk pertaining to finance. All of these areas, they're all inter, uh, interrelated and they all work together to make the organization work as a whole. So that means that if we assess risk in any of the areas, it has to be used for decision making within these areas potentially, but it has to be also useful for decision making at other levels. So outside of each of those single areas uh, and, and at the enterprise level ultimately. And we saw as well that uh, it needs to be continuous. Uh, so it has to be owned within the organization, within uh, the enterprise, uh, and it has to be embedded as well in the overall business cycles, but all of the different uh, business units that we have in a normal organization. Uh, risk treatment, as we saw part of the process, well, they have to be identified, but they have to be approved as well so that they get to be implemented if and as required. Uh, so it's not just to identify them and know what could happen and how we could deal with it. Uh, we may have activities that needs to be implemented and so that we have to look at that. And the last part is in, in line again uh, with what I just said. So as we do implement this as such, uh, we will get into a, a position as an organization where we will improve our decision making. Should we stop doing what we're doing? Should we change the way that we're doing things? Uh, should we do other things as well or not? And that is uh, quite uh, important there. So uh, that is all of what I wanted to cover. Uh, so we're in the question period. So if you have any questions, uh, I would certainly ask you to uh, uh, post those questions uh, on the chat as Britt identified. Uh, I have a couple more slides as uh, we see those questions potentially coming in, uh, but I wanted to also uh, show you what PECB has to offer you as a potential partner as well uh, of uh, their organization. There's uh, different courses uh, related to risk uh, introduction to the ISO 31000, uh, so that goes uh, quite a bit more in depth than what I just did and now with that really short introduction. Uh, there's also a foundation level course that exists. Uh, and then two other courses that look at the risk manager aspect and try to really help risk managers to really master the process uh, from the risk manager course and the lead risk manager course uh, to uh, be able to also define process uh, of dealing with risk and implement them within your organization. So a risk manager that would be involved to really uh, start that, uh, that new uh, area. So I don't see any questions coming. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yes, we have some questions actually, uh, but we do not we do not have much time, so we'll just be answering a few. We can start off with the first one, which is um, ISO twenty seven thousand and one, the two thousand and thirteen version. Risk assessment can be done uh, for the organization and is not restricted to the process that was followed earlier on, threat, vulnerability, impact, probability of occurrence, etc. So what do you suggest on this? 
so the question is that it is not strictly only aligned with the process as I showed it here? Yes, as yes. far as I understood it. Yes. So as I demonstrated here, the uh, ISO 31000, uh, the risk management process that we're talking here is at uh, a top level process with the major activities that needs to be done for an organization to be posi uh, positioned as best as possible. Now, I, as we get into any of those areas, whether we're talking about the organizational type of risk, or we're looking at financial risk, or information security risk, now there's, they're all different domains. So we're going we're gonna to have to potentially drill down to specific uh, uh, part of these domains and, and areas, and yes, further define our risk management process with specific procedures. And yes, if we talked about 27,001, uh, we're talking about a lot more details as well. Uh, risk management is one portion of the standard, but there's other areas as well that are there, uh, such as, well, the information management system that needs to be in place, but also all the controls that needs to be in place that are on top of just even identifying risk. But the risk management, though, is there to, uh, when we deal with 27001, to look at how we should deal with these controls. Because in the 27001, those controls in the annex are recommended controls. They're not mandatory. So the first, I, the first step is really to look at your own situation. Assess your organization and then determine what are those threats, what are those vulnerabilities, and what then does apply. What do you need to protect based, again, on your own quality criteria or objectives that you need, uh, that you have within your organization. And that's how then, based on that risk assessment, in some part, you're going to be able to define that, well, out of these controls, these are the ones that are the most critical and these are the ones that we need to implement. So that's how the two work together, uh, and that applies for the same thing as well. If we're talking about finance, well, it's a different domain, and yes, we will have a different approach on how we will use that process of risk management, and we'll look at it uh, on that way as well with that same uh, domain. So I hope that that uh, put in perspective on how the two work together. They don't work against each other. They are uh, complementary. They work together. Thank you, Steve. Um, the next question is, how can the duplication of functions be prevented between business impact analysis and risk assessments in a project? Yes, uh, well, how you can avoid duplication is, uh, again, we saw one part of the process and the framework here, which is communication. Uh, all the key players in a project have to work together. So there will be a project manager, which has the overall lead, and yes, there's a, a part of doing an impact analysis, a business case for that project, uh, which may include a portion of assessing some risk at the onset. Well, the project manager is responsible to ensure that coordination. If we have different resources doing those two activities, uh, the project manager is there to ensure that they talk to each other, they exchange information, and they align each other with the ultimate goal uh, and uh, to, to ensure the achievement of the outcomes of the project. And as the project evolves towards execution, it's still, again, the role of the project manager at the top to be able uh, uh, to master this uh, uh, coordination there to make sure that as we manage or evolve uh, those risks uh, and some new risk occurs, that, again, everyone is informed and everyone uh, operates as a one single system and not in isolation. And that links back to the fact that risk has to be embedded to the uh, organization's processes, the business processes, which then include project management as much as financial management or sales management or marketing management and all. Thank you, Steve. We have, we'll have one more question. Uh, how, how to identify the appropriate list of threats and vulnerabilities relevant to a company or uh, identity? Yeah, this... Uh, there's a bit of guidance on that on 27001. You would have a lot of guidance uh, in the uh, uh, 31010, in fact, when we talk specifically about risk assessment. Because when we do that, yes, it's very specific to each organization, and we have to look at the foundation at internal but external factors as well. Uh, we have to look at all domains, so people, processes, partners, if we do business with other uh, organizations, uh, but products as well or services. So what are we uh, working with, goods or services? 
Uh, and then we have to look at, uh, yes, so if I said people, that means, well, who are our people? Where are they located? Uh, which area geographically are they located? Potentially uh, different cultures. Uh, so all of those are going to identify uh, those potential uh, threats or vulnerabilities within an organization. Uh, so it's a, it's a very complex process uh, and it's very specific as well to each organization. If we're a smaller organization, we work in one city, uh, we're either in, uh, in Los Angeles or we're in uh, Luxembourg or we're in uh, Tokyo, uh, well that's one thing. But if we're a global company, then there's, uh, there's a difference. We may have a presence in 10 countries in the world, uh, different cultures, uh, multiple type of people with their own individual cultures, uh, different systems. So we have to look at all of those perspectives and that's how we get to identify potential uh, threats and vulnerabilities. Thank you, Steve, very much. We have also other questions, but we'll be responding to them through email because we don't have much time left. Thank you, Steve, for the highly informative webinar. I think everyone enjoyed it and everyone learned something new today. Just as a note, this webinar is recorded and can be found on our YouTube channel, so don't forget to check back on our upcoming webinars on topics of your interest by visiting our website or social media pages. Meet you all again same day, same time next week, and please email me at marketing at pcb.com if anyone has any questions or comments regarding the webinar. Steve, you may conclude now. Okay, so uh, on that note, uh, well, on that slide, uh, you have uh, the information of our company. Uh, uh, and again, we'll uh, do our best to answer all the other email, uh, the other questions uh, uh, through email. Uh, and uh, feel free to, uh, again, contact PCB or myself if you have further questions or you want to discuss further the subject. And on that note, thank you very much for having attended that uh, webinar today. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.